Hello, welcome back to History of Wine and the Vine. I'm Emily Kate. So last week we spoke about the ancient Greek vase paintings. So moving along that type of art theme, I wanted to bring us over to ancient Egypt and take a look at the tomb paintings. Now, in contrast to the ancient Greek vase paintings where it's, it wasn't daily life that was depicted, it was more these mythological stories and creatures. Over in ancient Egypt, there was a lot of kind of very practical um, showing of the vintage. And that's really wonderful for us because that gives us a great idea of how wine was made in ancient Egypt. So first off, what we're looking at right here is from the tomb of Kamhuese at Thebes, and it's from about 1450 BC, and this is a great description of the vintage. So what I want to point out is we're going to be reading this opposite. We're going to be reading this from right to left. So let's start over here in the vineyard. As you can see, the vines are trained in a very interesting way, not bush trained or um, trellis trained like we know of today, but they're actually kind of more similar to the pergola style. So they would be kind of suspended up in the air on these, um, on these suspensions, and the people below are actually kneeling down and picking the grapes, only to put them in these wicker baskets right here. So once the wicker baskets are filled, they're brought over, and they're brought over to the winery. Now this is what the first step of making wine um, would have looked like. So here, this actually right here, is a treading basin. And then here we have this contraption that the ancient Egyptians made for stability. So a type of um, wooden contraption that would have suspended uh, strings that people that were stomping on these slippery, slippery grapes could hold on to so that they didn't fall down. Then we have, once they um, extracted some of the juice, they would put it into these amphora. And as you can see, the amphora are not stoppered yet because they're going through fermentation. Then they would have been stoppered and then the transport can begin. So they were either taken to tombs or they could have been placed um, in ships for trade. And I love this because this is really gives us a great idea of exactly how um, these amphora were transported. They've clearly made this contraption um, that has strings attached to it um, and they are transporting the amphora that way. So next up, we have this. It's a vineyard and grape treading scene from the Theban tomb of the Royal Herald, and his name was Intef. So thank you, Intef, because now we get to look at all of these wonderful things. So here, um, we have another, obviously we recognize this as the vineyard, and actually what I love about this is that if you look at this character right here, this is the vineyard manager. So this is an ancient vineyard manager, and he's actually testing the grapes so that he can let the workers know, the pickers know, um, if it's okay to pick them yet, and if they are indeed ready. So once this is actually being um, picked, and you have the wicker baskets, you bring it over here to the treading floor like we spoke about, and this gentleman is kind of throwing more in, and um, they are holding on, making sure that they um, are stable while treading the grapes. Now next we have, this is something of an ancient cartoon. And over here we have an ancient winemaker. And he is actually tasting the wine. It's being presented to him by the young lady on the left. And he's actually tasting the wine to make sure that it is up to his standards. Over here we have the boss man and the workers. And what's happening here is pretty humorous because the boss is asking over here um, why the line has stopped and why people are not going into the cellar and putting these amphora in the cellar. And this gentleman is knocking on the door because our friend over here has fallen asleep on the job. So the, um, the text that you see are actually them talking and they think that he is not just tired, from a lot of hard work, but that he is actually tired because he's gotten into the wine because he's the guard of the cellar. So it's, it's kind of a humorous work scene. Now next we have another work scene, and this is more of the wine press. So once the grapes were originally trodden um, on, the, on the floor in the basin, they were kind of placed into this canvas type bag with these two sticks on the end that would have been pulled and pulled in order to get all the remaining juice out. And as you can see, this says red. So this would have been red wine gone into this white vat. 
interesting over here, what we see are different stages of fermentation represented in these amphora. So down here, these are either empty or primary fermentation amphora. So these would have been unstoppered, and because of that, um, we believe that primary fermentation would have happened in them because they are close to the um, to the press, as well, they actually would have um, allowed carbon dioxide to be emitted. Whereas these up second, sorry, these ones right here, um, are fully stoppered. And so we know that um, they must have been completely fermented wine um, because these up here are stoppered in a way that we believe they are actually um, the wine inside is actually going through secondary fermentation. So the way that they would have allowed for that is that they would have covered over the top with clay after primary fermentation had ended, but they would have maybe stuck in like a reed or something to kind of um, make sure that all the space wasn't filled and there was a bit of area for some gas to escape. So here we have a couple of details. And don't worry, I have closer images. So we'll start with this. So um, this is from the tomb of Beni Hassan in 2000 BC, and as you can see, very similarly we have this, which in my opinion I believe was probably from the same um, stabilization system uh, as the treading floor basin uh, had. And what they've done here is they've actually eliminated a whole um, group or person um, who would normally be twisting on this side by kind of having a fixed point that they're twisting around and obviously like we said the grapes would be in here and this would be the wine that's coming out. Now over here um, we have these uh, jugs and they to me they look like they are side sprouted spouted strainer jugs and what's interesting about these are that they were kind of like a um, decanting system of ancient time because as you can see the top is where um, the wine would be coming out and under here all the sediment would be collecting now a lot of times right over here on the inside of the jug on these areas there would actually be like a piece of cloth that would kind of catch a lot of the sediment so as it was transferred over here into the amphora it wouldn't necessarily um, have all the sediment in it and it could kind of be decanted. Now here we just have a close-up of our little friend that fell asleep and now over here, you know, I love this because we actually still use um, siphons. This is an ancient siphon. And we still actually use siphons to move wine in vineyards today. And as you can see here, that's what's happening. So this is somebody who's working on the suction in order to move what's from here to here. They actually also um, drank out of siphons. Um, so it wasn't only used for moving wine, but also for drinking wine in order to avoid sediment. Ah uh, yes, so this is an example of a bit of excess in the drinking culture of ancient Egypt. And there are two images here. So this is the woman. And um, what's interesting about this is that this happens obviously throughout history and some of the more amusing terms I've heard to describe it is the sacrifice to Dionysus. Um, and she is obviously expelling um, the excess wine that she took in. And here we also have, um, these are gentlemen who had a bit too much at the banquet and are being carried home by their um, workers. So I hope that you enjoyed this today, um, this walk through the art um, in the tombs in ancient Egypt, and I will see you next week. Cheers!